Today we've got a battle decades in the making. Cinestill 800T or Portra 800. But first, take a look at these photos. Which one do you prefer? We're gonna come back to that at the end of the episode. So if you're Batman wandering around the streets of Gotham City at night, and you wanna take some color photos, you've really only got two options. Cinestill 800T or Portra 800. These two films are kissing cousins and they have a lot more in common than they're different, but we're gonna figure out which one of these two films is best because that's what we do on YouTube. So let's start with Cinestill, and I'm gonna post some shots along the way. If that's okay with you, we like to keep things consensual on this channel. Make no mistake, I love Cinestill. I have shot probably more rolls of Cinestill 800T than I have any other film. But let's get one thing crystal clear. There really is no Cinestill 800T. I mean, there obviously is the company Cinestill, still, and they obviously put film in boxes but they don't actually make the film that they're boxing up and putting in their packaging. It's Kodak. So what we really have in this video is two different Kodak film stocks. What is Cinestill 800T? Well, it's actually Kodak Vision 3 500T movie film, but I'm only about the 6,000th YouTuber to point that out, I'm pretty sure. But that may not be completely fair to Cinestill. They actually do run it through a process to remove the rimjet coating on the back of the film, so you don't have to develop it in ECN2 chemicals like normal cine film. Rimjet backing, allows you to use normal C41 color film developing process to develop Cinestill 800T. So that's pretty cool. And kudos to Cinestill for processing this motion picture film and allowing us to shoot it. Anyway, as we continue, it's worth noting that it's the removal of this rimjet layer that produces what are called halations. And I'm gonna show you some pictures as we go throughout of what those look like. If you look at the light points in these images, you kind of see this red smear that, that tends to happen around light points. The rimjet layer that's on the back of Kodak Vision 3 film serves as a anti-halation effect. Serves as an anti-halation layer. So you remove this layer, you're gonna get these halation effects, which comes from the lot bouncing off the back of the film base and then making those weird lot smearing patterns. And I have to admit, I quite like the look of the halations. I think they're really cool. I think they're really cool. It makes my highlights light up like Darth Vader's lightsaber. I mean, what's cooler than that, right? But I will admit they're very distinctive and also very polarizing. But I, for one, think they look really great. I also like the Star Wars sequel trilogy, so I might just be an idiot. Anyway, Cinestill is a unique film for one big reason, and it comes from the T, and you can see they've got it on the box for you there. The T stands for tungsten. This is a tungsten balanced film rather than a daylight balanced film. Now I have no idea what exactly tungsten is, but I do know that Cinestill 800T has shifted a lot farther towards the blue end of the spectrum versus Portra 800. So that is definitely something that you're going to want to know, and it's going to factor heavily into this video. And I don't mean shifted cooler like James Bond cooler, I mean color temperature cooler. And if you're wondering why you would want tungsten balanced film, it's because a lot of times you find yourself shooting under tungsten lot, like under street lots, or in your grandma's foyer, or in eastern Kentucky, her foyer. Anyway, this film is formulated to be shot under the warm orange glow of tungsten lighting. Since we know that Cinestill 800T actually comes from Kodak and it's Kodak Vision 3 500T, I took a look at Kodak's data sheet. Kodak's data sheet for Vision 3 500T says that the, the film is supposed to be white balanced for 3200 Kelvin lighting, which in my experience is way different than Portrait 800, which is balanced for daylight or about 5,000 Kelvin. A lot of the really awesome film aesthetic that you get from Cinestill 800T is due to this cooler color shift. And I have to say, it really makes night photography look really great when you're shooting it on Cinestill 800T. It's my go-to choice for that. But the drawback to that is daytime shots with the really cool shifted colors oftentimes look weird and not really cool. That's one of the reasons why I actually like to shoot Cinestill on 120 format. It's much easier for me to chew through 16 shots on my Mamiya 645 rather than 36 on whatever my 35 millimeter camera is. A lot of times I'll go out shoot 10 or 15 shots and then I'll be stuck with the other half of the roll um, still to shoot and no occasion to use it. So it's worth noting that Cinestill 800T is really the only tungsten balanced film left. There was a world where there were tons of tungsten balanced films out there for photographers to shoot, but if you want that really cool nighttime aesthetic, this is really your only option. It's hard to believe that Cinestill 800T has been in our lives for nearly a decade now. It's become a favorite of many film photographers who have fallen in love with that Blade Runner 1980s vibe that you get when you take this stuff out and shoot it at nighttime. It's definitely got a look to it, and you're either going to love it or hate it. So that's enough about Cinestill. It's time to talk about Kodak's other night boy, and that's Kodak Portra 800. 
and I've got to get it out of the floor where I swiped it off the table. Reading the cute little words from Kodak's data sheet about Portra 800, they say that this film delivers well-balanced color saturation, very fine grain, and best in class underexposure latitude. This film is ideal for long lenses and low light situations for natural skin tone reproduction and enhanced color in the most difficult lighting. Portra 800 is the film of choice. So those are all very nice things to say, but how is it in practice? Kodak's been making films since the dinosaurs walked the earth, but actually Kodak's Portra line of films came along relatively late in the film life cycle, just as digital was kind of on the horizon. You don't have to be friggin' Sherlock Holmes to figure out with a name like Portra, they designed the film to shoot landscapes. I'm kidding. For portraits, duh. And with its warmer colors, fine grain, and beautiful Kodak branding, it's easy to see why this stuff is so popular. I have to say though, Kodak Portra 800 is kind of the weird uncle of the Kodak Portra family. You've got 160, 400, and 800 at this point, although there were almost innumerable versions that predated these. And Kodak Portra 800 colors very differently as compared to 160 and 400. And to me, it's what they do with the greens. There's this very decided shift of the greens toward the blue end of the spectrum that exists in 160 and 400. And with 800, it is very much green. The green is very different. Think Nickelodeon slime green. But make no mistake, many of the best qualities from Portra 160 and 400 are still present here. You've got the nice warm color palette of the other Portras present here. A little bit of contrast, but not too much and a very pleasing film aesthetic. This being an 800 speed film, it's very easy to overexpose it in daytime, and that's a look a lot of folks really like. Although the green can get a little crazy at times, I think on the whole, Portrait 800 is a lot more realistic than Sinistel 800T. And while a lot of this review will focus on shooting these films at night, I think that if you're focused on color accuracy and color reproduction, Kodak Portrait 800 is the one to go with. And if you're exclusively shooting in daylight, it is the one to go with. So let's compare the colors of the two film stocks. As we've already talked about in the review, Cinestill 800T is gonna color much more cool than Portra 800. And I think with these shots right here, I think that you can really see that. Look how much cooler the color temperature is with that Cinestill 800T. It's definitely a vibe, but I also want you to take a look at this picture. This shows the overemphasis of Kodak Portra 800 when it comes to greens. In terms of choosing which one you want based on color palette, it's more of a threshold question. Are you shooting at night or not? If you need to shoot during daytime, Kodak Portra 800 is probably the one that you're gonna wanna go with. But if if you're exclusively shooting a roll of film at night, absolutely, without question, go with Cinestill 800T. A few words about the image quality of these two films. Both films deliver exceptional image quality. They are really, really high resolution films, despite their 800 film speed. At ISO 800, there's gonna be quite a bit of grain present no matter which film you go with. So that's just something to keep in mind. You're not gonna be able to blow up your images as big and not detect the grain. Uh, these are 800 speed films. You're gonna get some grain, but hey, we love grain. This is film, right? I will note though, that because Cinestill's base is a 500 speed film, it probably has just a little bit more resolution present, but that's just my eye. The one thing that you really need to note about image quality though gets back to to what I was talking about with the halation effect. There is no escaping the halations that appear at nighttime on light points with Cinestill 800T. And if you think these suck and you don't want them, you don't want Darth Vader lightsabers on every light that's present in your shots, you're not gonna wanna shoot 800T. But I happen to like the halations, so it isn't a sticky point for me. In my mind, both of these films deliver top-notch image quality and there isn't much between them. I think that they both definitely have a place in your bag, but this is YouTube. Like I said, after all, we have to pick which one is best. So I'm gonna lay out some of the strengths of each film. The use case for Cinestill 800T is almost anything that you're gonna be doing at night. If you're going to be shooting night photography, this film, to my eye, delivers a vastly superior image. Cinestill 800T delivers a vastly superior image. It isn't even really close. Portra 800, if you need your film to be a little bit more flexible, if you wanna put a roll of 36 in your camera and kinda of be ready for anything, Portrait 800 is the one to go with. But like I said, this is YouTube. We have to pick which one is best. And, and the only way to tell you which one I think is best is to tell you that I think I've shot more rolls of this. I think I've shot more rolls of this than any film stock that I own. So that should tell you something right there about this film. My photography and my style of photography often finds me out shooting at night. I really, really, really love night photography. So I find myself reaching for Cinestill 800T all the time. So for no reason other than the fact that I enjoy night photography, in my mind, 
Cinestill 800T is the best. So let's check out those photos again from the beginning of the video. So here are those pictures again, and I'm gonna put on the bottom which film is which now. Let me know in the comments which image you liked best. Maybe Portrait 800 is a little more realistic, but what's the fun in that? Cine still makes your images look like they came right out of a 1980s movie. And you know what? I was born in the 80s, and I'm good with that. And you know what else I'm good with? Is my Contax G1. Check out this video where I shoot a few rolls of film through my Contax G1. But as always, guys, thanks for watching.